Now we are starting with real business cycle models. So if you look at uh, uh, historically what happened was that uh, after World War II, so there was a time of Keynesian models and uh, these RBC models, they were developed in response to the poor performance of the large scale Keynesian models. So what they thought, uh, but particularly uh, Keynesian models were not able to explain stagflation easily. Right. So government expenditure, even if it was increasing, it was not able to increase the output. It was only resulting in increase in prices. Right. So performance of a large scale Keynesian model. Large scale. Keynesian models. And they perform they performed very badly, particularly in the years of stagflation, right? And uh, these models, these large scale for large scale Keynesian forecasting models, they were based upon backward looking expectations. So they assume sort of that whatever happened in the past is going to happen in the future as well. Well, uh, that may not be true, you know, because uh, what happens was, and this particular thing, it was criticized by Lucas. By Lucas. That was what your Lucas critique was, right? And all of this, it led to the demand for models which are grounded in microeconomic foundations and rational expectations. So main assumptions of RBC models uh, uh, models are households, they maximize lifetime utility and firms, they maximize profit. So it's like solving the microeconomic optimization problem. The households, maximize lifetime utility. and firms maximize profits. Right. Rational expectation is also assumed. This is basically a forward looking behavior. So agents, they are going to, uh, they're going to use all information which is available in order to form their expectations. So these are, their expectations are not only backward looking. They might look at that particular data. So for example, if they want to predict about prices, they might look at price data, but they might, they will also look at the other variables which will affect prices. Right. So technology shocks, they drive business cycles. shocks drive business cycles right uh, so uh, in fact uh, you should rather write technology shocks drive supply side fluctuations and they drive real business cycles, right? So we would rather name it like that. So technology shocks, they drive supply side fluctuations. And uh, because they drive supply side fluctuations, hence the name real business cycles. So output is big. Uh, uh, and uh, deep structural parameters, they govern behavior, mainly preferences and technology. Right? Uh, so,
deep structural parameters. Um, the govern behavior. Basically, preferences in technology. So, deep parameters means fundamental constants such as utility function, curvature, or what is the share of capital in, in the production. So, all of this. So, these are structural, right? These are, these, these are structural. So, the model is uh, policy invariant in a way which is satisfying sort of Lucas critique. Okay, so I mean, the, the main idea is that the shocks are exogenous. They are not caused by the internal dynamics of the model. And uh, then you have other exemptions, structural nature of model. of model it makes it policy invariant. Right. In a way, what do you mean is that uh, uh, satisfying or immune to Lucas critique. Immune to Lucas critique. Now you have to understand <clears throat> this particular point. It means what? If the government policy is going to change, it would not change the behavior of individuals, right? So this is not going to change the people behave in the model because behavior is based on deep structural parameters. What are those, uh, what are those parameters? Basically your preferences, technology. Huh? So they are not based on the past performance. They are not based on uh, the rules that can shift when the policy is going to change. So the, the idea is that because government policy, it cannot change the nature of the individuals, uh, uh, how they behave in the model. So it means that it is policy invariant. And that means it is immune to Lucas group. Then you have something which is called impulse and propagation mechanism. So when you talk about impulse, impulse in, impulse here means that uh, there are some technology productivity shocks which are given to the system. These are exogenous technology productivity shocks and they are going to shift the production function. And the propagation mechanism is that household households are going to respond to uh, in case the real wages are going to change or if the real interest rates are going to change. And that is going to create something which is called the cyclical patterns, right? So let us just write that. Impulse mechanism. Productivity. change shifts the production function the movement that is going to change it is going to directly change the real wages and real interest rates And productivity is going to change. It is going to change real wages, right? Changes. The real wages.
and real rate of interest. Propagation mechanism is that how households are going to respond to the changes in real wages or real interest rate. Because what they will do is, when real wages are going to change, they are going to respond by changing their labor supply. right? In case of real wages are going to increase, they might increase the supply. If they're going to fall, they're going to fall. They, that is going to reduce their supply. Or if the real interest rate is going to change, they might change their consumption and savings pattern. Households. respond to wage or interest rate changes by adjusting labor supply Bhai, if real wages is going to change, they will, they are going to change the labor supply. Na? If real wages are going to increase, normally people will work more. Right? If they're really going to increase a lot, it means they might work less also. Backward bending supply curve. But yaha pe, I think we are going to assume upward sloping only. Huh? consumption, saving, etc. And these responses by the households, they spread the initial shock over time. So once the technology shock is given, then in response to the technology shock, how production function is going to shift. When production function shifts, real wages, real interest rate is going to change. Then households are going to respond to uh, these changes by changing their labor supply, by changing their consumption savings decisions. Right. These responses spread The initial shock over time is creating business cycle fluctuations. Right, so what I'll do is I'll stop here. We'll take the discussion further in the next class. So this is basically your section 16.2.1, right? Uh, I've not completed that section yet. We will do that in the next class. Right. Thank you very much.